You know, I'll shake his hand after the game. Yeah, he looks like he's real comfortable, doesn't he? <laughs> well, here we go. The score is tied. Mankato Loyola seven, Manolman seven. 44 seconds left to go in regulation time. It is a fourth and four situation at the 19, and timeout is going to be called now by Manolman. Ken Bauman coming That's out. That's his last timeout. And I don't know if they've scouted him well enough to know that, that Craig's leg is bothering him and to watch for a fake because this might be a situation where it, it is in order because there's not that big a gain necessary for the first down, only four yards, and any kind of roll off the line of scrimmage by one of the tight end on the play would uh, no doubt pick up enough yardage for the first down, and Rognus is the holder. Yes, the starting quarterback, as is the case with most of the teams, is the holder, so you have a world of options there, and it also is going to be interesting to see who all comes in. They have another receiver in the lineup in Mark, uh, Marty McGraw, number 84. They've got Matichek, their regular fullback. So they've got, you know, a number of horses in there. Josh at Josh Ashley is in as well. So quite a few of their running backs and receivers are in. We will see. Will Rob Craig kick it away? Or will Colin Rognes do something with it? It looks like 44 seconds to go. Rognes will hold penalty mark. It could be offside against Manoma. I now. think it's Manoma. In high school, you can't pop off and jump back, evidently, because that's what Chad Sweep did. He was going to try to rush in from the right end position and block. It is an offside on Manoma, and that'll put him a little closer, which is not necessarily good for the field goal unit if they intend to kick a field goal because now the ball is at the 14 yard line but they've got the first down and that's a first down so, so they don't have to worry about it now what do you do you run it into the middle of the field take that shot or try to throw because they don't first, have any timeouts on first and 10 with 44 seconds to go Rognes deuce backfield twins right throw into the end zone to Kolars it is intercepted Intercepted in the end zone by Alan Hodeck, the senior safety of the Monoman Indians. Alan Hodeck with a big interception with 38 seconds to go, and there was a lot of coverage down there at level coverage around Andy Kolars when Rognes put it up. Well, that was the play. Just put it up there and hope Kolars can get it, but it was a it's kind of a rainbow shot. It went up and was coming straight down and never got deep enough for Kolars to use his ability. Look, he's behind there a little bit, but they got to throw it deep into the end zone for him to have a shot. And Hodek steps in front there for the interception. 38 seconds to play. And Manoman has no timeouts. I would imagine they're going to play for overtime and try to slug it out with them in the extra session. 38 seconds to go in regulation time. Both defenses have been adept at the pass inter interception today. And indeed, Rognes will ground the ball. And with the clock running, we're down to half a minute to go in regulation time. We'll need to get our overtime rule book out here shortly and explain things. I'll leave that things. to you. <laughs> I don't have it. We don't, <laughs> we don't do the ice, I know. know that. Each team gets the ball on the 10-yard line and gets four downs. To get in. Been a while since we've had an overtime game in the prep bowl. And then once you may, if you should score, then it's a one point or two point decision there on the extra point. That's right. And we saw we had an overtime game in the semifinals, and we'll talk about that when we come back. There's not been an overtime game in quite a while in Class C. The end of regulation, it is Mankato Loyola 7, Monoman 7, back with overtime in just a moment. are going to overtime in a Minnesota high school football championship game for the first time since 1977. That too was a class C tilt and it resulted in a 22 to 20 win Battle Lake over Henderson. Welcome back to the prep bowl at the Metrodome in Minneapolis with Jim Gilliland. This is Doug McLeod at the end of regulation time. Monoman seven, 
Mankato Loyola seven. Last year, Manoman beat Loyola 42 to nothing in this championship game. Here, there's been no scoring in the second half, and it goes down to a 7-7 tie, and we'll play somebody wins it. Each team gets a chance, first and goal at the 10-yard line. If they don't score, the other team will do the same. Loyola, I believe, won the toss, although there was never an official indication, and is elected to go on offense first. So here we go as Ragnus sets them down. First and goal at the 10, delay to the five-yard line for Matt Rogers. Not quite to the five, stopped at about the six-yard line. I should point out that even if they do score, Manoman will get a That's chance right. to come yep. back. And it's not easy to defend your championship. Manoman forced to overtime here in Class B as we look at the first down game. Bold in the semifinals, scoreless at regulation with Cass and Manorville. Each team got a field goal in the first overtime. That's right. And then Cass and Manorville scored first in the second overtime but missed the kick, and Bold came back to win. Up the middle again, and to the line. Did not get in. Really? They did not get in, and it is right on the forward lip of the goal line, it looks, before Pete Matichek got stopped. Look how close that is. Third and goal at the one. Well, Manoman get, her, get out the offensive strategy book here as Matichek takes it right down to the one, working those knees hard, and the Crusaders are that close to taking the lead. Third and goal at the one-yard line. Rognes sets him down. Matichek up and over, touchdown. Now Mankato Loyola's Pete Matichek goes in from the one. And now it is 13 to seven, Loyola. They'll have their option. And then Manoman will go back and have its opportunity. Four downs inside the 10. Place kicker Rob Craig is in the game. We'll try to boot it through for the one point conversion. Assuming we don't have a fake. Rognus to hold for the point after a high snap. Fumble, Manoman recovered. So there is no extra point for Mankato Loyola. And it is 13 to 7 Loyola. And now Manoman will have four downs from inside from the 10-yard line to try to get on the board. It's another rule of overtime that each team goes in the same direction, so there's no climate advantage. Matichek, he only needed a little bit, a few inches, and he got them piling up over the middle for the touchdown. Hyder scored on a one-yard run at seven minutes left in the first quarter for Manoman. Rognes completed a 35-yard pass to score for Loyola. Now Manoman goes to work. Hyder, here comes Athman, and he'll go to the six-yard line. Allman on the stop. It is now 13 to seven, Loyola, after the one yard plunge by Pete Matashek. This is a very exciting way to finish. Yeah. I keep looking at the clock to see how much time is left. There isn't there any is, time. There's no just, time left. Yep. Either you get in or you don't in four downs. It's kind of football's version of the penalty kick in soccer or the penalty shot in hockey. Second and goal at the six. Hyder sets them. They go to the tailback. In comes Troutner. Touchdown. And now it's tied. Manoman can't lose in the first overtime. Troutner, a six yard run, ties the game for Manoman. How long could this go on? Well, he had some room here as he cuts off the left side. It looked like they might be able to stop him short once they got him slowed down, but he just kept those legs churning and backed into the end zone. And is it Troutner to hold? Secora will come in for the kick. We've not seen him since he got the point after kick on Heider's run with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Jeremy Secora, a very rare commodity, a straight ahead kicker. Heider will hold. Here's the game. <laughs> it's short, and we're still tied, 13 to 13. Unbelievable. Oh. That was right. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that you sh that it's short without a deflection there. It was, uh, he had the proper angle, was not, just went under the crossbar. 
And then we'll do it all over and again. And it's 13-13. I still couldn't see whether that was nipped. No, it was wide. It was wide. It yeah. was high enough, but it was wide left. Well, sir. Now they'll take another break. Boy, there was really a hushing over the Monoman crowd. They were really in a frenzy, anticipating rushing on the field, okay. going bananas, whatever. And stack. they saw the ball took off. Well, let's listen well, to Ken Bauman's strategy is, here. Is I don't think he's going to drop some Manoma, stuff. Manoma oh, guys, don't worry about a damn thing. Keep your day heads off. Hey, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's what they were saying in the Monoman Indian huddle. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Roughly. 13 13 in overtime. Pete Matashek goes in from the one for Loyola. The snap was high and the ball fumbled and recovered by Manoman on the point after kick. So that made it 13 to 7. Then Jamie Troutner went in from the six for Manoman. And Segura's kick was short and wide. And here we are. 13-13. Three-minute strategy session is winding down. And we'll go back at it again. And now this time I believe Manoman will get the first shot at it. They went out to midfield and had the little confab. 25 seconds from now, we'll go right back at it. That's the only time the clock runs is on this little three minute break. 13 13 game. You know who feels worse about this? Bold and St. Cloud <laughs> Cathedral because they're all pumped up and ready to go out and knock each other around, and they should be out warming up and ready to play by now. And they're standing around trying to stay loose, trying to stay mentally sharp. We'll have that game with Perry Williams and Leo Lewis coming up next. Now, Manoman strikes first. Blanker slot to the right. Yost single set back. Here goes Heider to throw. Pursuit turns the corner. Heider, touchdown! Rich Heider on first and goal at the 10. Takes it in 10 yards. And Manoman is back in the saddle again. Well, it's a time to be excited, but you can't, you have to control your emotions because the game's not over. The other team has just 10 yards and four plays to even it up. So you really have to get under control. A couple of attaboys and that's it. Get ready to play defense because Loyola will have another chance. Here's Hyder. Two Almost. touchdowns today. Somebody cuts through here and nearly gets him. 62. It looked like, well, 68 maybe, but Hyder was able to get around that threat. And get up, might have been Mike Kennedy. He's been all over the field today. Here Here's again. Jeremy Secora now for the point after kick. Hyder will hold. High snap again. Secora gets that one through. Secora's kick is good. And now it is Manoman 20, Mankato Loyola 13. And it's the Crusaders' turn. We are in overtime at the Class C Championship game at the Metrodome. Help me with the technicality here. Are we oh. in double overtime or not? I or is it just know. all one big deal Continuing until someone Continuing overtime. I, you know, I don't know. Oh, Second I round of overtime anyway. Here come the Crusaders. Back on the field, all 11 of them running on together. Fanny has not touched bench for either of these teams since the game began. Everybody up now, and here go the Mankato Loyola Crusaders. First and goal at the 10. Rognes with a man in motion, rolling, looking, big pursuit, and he is down. Fumble! Who's got it? Manoman may have the ball. ball Manoman's got the ball, and the Manoman Indians will win. The fumble recovered by, I think, Tony Athman. We'll catch it on the replay, and Manoman wins in overtime, 20 to 13. Unbelievable, what a finish. <laughs> 20 to 13, Manoman in overtime. 
as the Monoman Indians now have won the last three Class A titles and 39 games in a row. The season ends in perfect.